Hello everyone, welcome back to this week's Stock Dive and of course welcome back to the channel, best place for long-term stock investing. Today, we are going to do a deep look uh, you know, into the shipping industry, more specifically Maybulk, which uh, used to be a company uh, founded by Mr. Robert Kwok, richest man in Malaysia. Now, disclaimer, we do own shares in the company and of course, None of this, uh, anything in this video should not be construed as financial advice. Please speak to an actual financial advisor if you want to make investment decisions. Stay safe. Before we begin, guys, uh, if you're interested in building your current portfolio, stock portfolio uh, into a six to seven figure range, we have a free training for you, just for you. It's in the description or the comments. Go check it out. Oh yeah, Jonathan, welcome back. How how has the week been? The week has been tiring. Oh, <laughs> it's why? been a long day. Okay. Studying about this company called Maybop. Wow, <laughs> so complicated. <laughs> uh. Anyway, yeah. since you've done some study on it, maybe you want to share with us what does uh, Maybop actually do? I know it's in a somewhat complicated industry, so yeah, yeah. go ahead. So Maybop is in the dry bulk shipping uh service industry. Not many analysts or even fund managers fund managers studied about this industry mm -hmm. because um, the business is simply not really generating a very lucrative uh, returns to them. Mm -hmm. So hence, there's not many people actually paying attention to this uh, industry. And there's actually someone who even refer it as a Holland industry. Holland, Holland. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so they're doing a dry shipping business. And just to share with you a little bit about what, um, this, uh, what ships do they have, uh, if you can see in this slide, they have actually uh, about six uh, different types of sizes in terms of bulk carriers. So the smallest one, we call it the handy size, where they can carry about 20,000 to 40,000 uh, DWT. And then... What is DWT before we go on? Uh, Dead weight uh, tonnage, if, Tan, I'm not, okay. ton, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that is the smallest. And as you go bigger, the biggest one is called cap size. Uh. I mm. think everybody, you, if you Google this, I think you will know it is the largest uh, bug carrier uh, ships. And actually, when you study about Maybach, right, everybody thought that we need to refer to this thing called the Baldic Dry Index. Yeah, it's very right, right? famous. Everyone talks yeah. about it. But actually, um, when you want to study about Maybach, you're not supposed to look at the Baldic Dry Index. Uh, and uh. I'll tell you more why. Later. Before we go on, right, I've always wanted to know, because I'm not, I, I rarely study this industry or so. Yeah. When they say dry bulk, does it mean exactly that? Like yes. Dry? So like there's no oil? Yeah, yeah. No uh, water, the wet, the, those uh, liquid kind of like products, right? We call it a wet bulk. Oh, wow. Yeah, How so creative. dry bulk okay. is mainly all those dry substances like right. your iron ore, coal, grains, and all the stuff only. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so they have like a specific Got container it. just for the dry bulks. Okay, yeah. so why, why is the Baltic dry index not that relevant? Yeah, okay, so I'll go into that later. Okay, but sure. But first, let me share with you a little bit about what, may, what types of ship does Maybach own, mm -hmm. right? So you can see the slide in their latest um, investor presentation. They actually disclosed this. Uh, as of March, uh, 31st of March, 2021, they actually own uh, five ships. Three ships, which is Carsa Max, and then two is Supramax. Mm -hmm. So Supramax is the one that is quite is the smallest one. Carsa mm -hmm. uh, Max is the medium size, and then Candy size is the... Oh, sorry, my mistake. Carsa Max is the largest, actually. Okay. Yeah, Supramax is the... the Middle one, the middle size, and then Heady Max is the largest. So they actually own only five ships. Mm. And two of the ships are actually long-term chartered. Means it's not owned by them. They actually uh, lease it from someone else. So uh. they rent it. Yeah, they rent yeah. it from someone else. And if you actually study about their latest quarter report, they actually plan to sell their ships. Ah, how yeah. come? So I'll talk more about this okay. later. Okay. So they actually planning to sell these two ships, which is their Supra Max. Mm -hmm. uh, those two ships, they, they are called Ala Madu and Ala Molek. And the reason why they sell it, uh, actually I can say it now, is because one, the age of the ship is actually quite old. Okay. It's about seven years old. And number two is because currently the dry, sh uh, dry shipping industry is actually booming. Correct. So you just think of it as like a property boom. And when property, when during a property boom, most of the property prices are actually increasing, right? 
So that's actually the best time to actually uh, sell your property in a way. So that's in, in interesting. It's like they're trying to diversify away. Uh, you, you can say in that. a way, they are trying to um, they are trying to like minimize their um, debts. Actually, ah. yeah. Uh, actually, I'll talk more about that later. Okay, What's sure, the reason sure. why they are selling? And yeah, like I mentioned just now, a lot of people actually look at the Baldic dry index just to like uh, evaluate the business growth and see how are they going to perform. When they see the index drop like 10%, they see like, oh, Maybach confirmed drop 10%. Yeah. But actually, that's not really the case because the Baltic dry index actually comprises of all the um, dry, the shipping that I have mentioned, the different types of sizes. There's cap size, handy size, yep. comma sack size. So all of those are actually uh, inside the component of the Baldic Dry Index. Mm -hmm. But Maybach only owns uh, Supramax and also the Handy Size, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and Panamax also. So right. you are supposed to look at only uh, two indexes, which is the Panamax Index and Supramax Index. Uh, it's okay. yeah. So it's more specific than just using the Baltic Dry. Yeah. The Baltic Dry is sort of like, uh, it's too broad and it takes into account like, Cap uh, size and all the size, yeah. But this one is more specific. Yeah, uh, correct. Okay. So if you see, right, uh, the Baldic Dry Index, uh, this I got it from the Trading Economics, and it's one of the latest data where the uh, Dry Index actually dropped about 2.1%. And the reason why they fell is because of the Cap Size Index drop a lot. Right. Yeah. But in the case for Panamax and Supramax Index, both of these indexes actually are rising. So... In the case for Maybach, it's actually a good sign for them. That's good. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah, you can just have a look at this uh, graph whereby you can see that the body cap size is actually going back to its uh, all-time high, which is about in 2007. Mm -hmm. It's going back to those like prime age where shipping is booming. I have, yeah. a, I have a theory that, you know, the reason they're selling is because... Um, They've suffered for so long, you know. Yeah. It's a 12-year pain, right? Correct, so now correct. Like, ah, finally, it's booming. Let's, let's yeah. sell it. Actually, one of the reasons is because their loans that they took up is yeah. quite a lot. And they also, they did mention in their prospects that they want to like, um, you know, want to just like uh, pay off all of their debts in a way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a partial exit. Like, yeah, way. it's a partial exit. Correct. So, yep. Uh, yeah. So, this, one of these charts that I got it from is the... Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's from Pacific Basin uh, annual report. Pacific Basin is another dry, uh, a very large uh, dry shipping industry in, I think it's in the US. Yeah, so according to their data, they show that the rates for the uh, BHSI, which is the Supramax and also the handy size, their spot rates, uh, they're actually rising quite tremendously over mm -hmm. the past uh, one year. So you can see that the year-on-year -year growth is about 200 plus That's percent. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. For a ship, right? Yeah, Yeah, for shipping. So it's it the COVID revenge spending bounce back, la, basically. Yeah, Everyone correct. starts spending now, so there's more shipments. And all that. Yeah, and also because there's a lack of containers and also, mm. yeah, supply all kinds of so. yeah, supply chain problems. All right, guys, if you need another opinion on your stock analysis, you can actually email us your research. Uh, however, it must be in a Google Doc and Google Sheet format. And it must not only consist of the financials of the company. Please do share with us about the company's business. How do you understand it as well as the valuation? All right, Jonathan. So how, um, how about the numbers? How right. do they look? Good, bad? Um, so far, if you look at these financials on the slides, uh, based on ticker, you can see that the revenue, which is the blue color bar, is actually not really performing that well. Uh, actually, there's a reason for it. Uh, if you can see, I actually highlighted in 2004 to 2013, they have about 15 bulk carriers. So back then, it's quite a lot. Lah. And also, back in 20, uh, 2004 to 2009, the, uh, the, dry, uh, the dry shipping industry also was booming during That's that time. That's right. Yeah, so hence their revenue and profit were actually doing pretty decent. However, after the um, after the euphoria stage of uh, dry shipping, there's actually uh, winter came up basically, and there's a the dry shipping industry actually wasn't really doing a wasn't having a great business uh, during that time, and that is during 2014 to 2018. So during those pe during that period, actually Maybach have about 19 bulk carriers. Yeah, 
However, they realized that because business wasn't doing that well, so they need to do something in order to finance their debt. Back then, of also, course. their debt also, also a lot. Yeah, I mean, yes. it's an industry that requires yeah. a lot of capital. Yeah, right? correct. You have, you to, have buy to buy the ships. ships. Yeah, correct. So, hence, uh, you can see that there are times that when their profit actually grows higher than their revenue, which is in specifically in 2018. That's because they sell some of their ships yep, during the yep. year. Yeah. And as years goes by, in 2019 to 2020, they have about 13 ships and 10 ships. Subsequently, until this year, I think once they sell two of their ships, they are gonna, they're going to left back about five more ships only, mm -hmm. which is three ships will be owned by them and two ships are leased. I see. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So if you look at their uh, operating margins, uh, back then during the booming uh, stage of the dry shipping industry, they're actually making quite a decent mar margin, which is about uh, roughly about 70 to 80% margins. However, over the, after, over the years, their margins actually fought quite a lot. Lah, because businesses wasn't doing well, the operating expenses uh, to maintain the ships are actually growing also a lot. Hence, uh, profit also has been affected a lot. Lah. Yep. So, in their latest one, they're only making about, uh, I'll say, 10% oh, operating margin. Big, yeah, yeah it's a quite a big drop. Yeah, it's a really huge drop. I think part of it is because, like, uh, if, I, if I can guess, it's because China as an economy is probably slowing down a bit. I mean, of course, 2008, there was the crash yeah. and all that. So, Correct. globally, like, you know, it's not as uh, it's not as good as it was before, and of course, competition. Yeah, there's a lot of competition. Yeah, yeah. Yes, eh? and yeah, in, in terms of their balance sheet, you can see that the the black color bar, which is the total debt, you can see in 2014 to 2020, their debts are actually uh, pretty humongous. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot, and that is actually the reason why they have been wanting to sell their ships, which is to pay off these debts. Yeah, 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 and you know, it's no surprise that the debt went up when you know, things got more challenging. Yeah, definitely. Right? Okay. Yep. Um, cash flow wise, uh, I would say also it is uh, pretty uh, all right. In the recent years, their cash flow actually recently improved, which is they turn they actually made the turnaround from a negative uh, operating cash flow to slowly a uh, positive one. And free cash flow wise also, they have been improving. Uh, that's because they have been selling their ships. Yeah. That's why their free cash flow has been increasing uh, in a way. Yep. So, yeah, as mentioned, yep. they will be selling two of their ships, which is the Supramax. Hence, hopefully, after they sell these two ships, they will become a net cash company. And I did actually a little bit of financial update. Uh, basically, they actually uh, mentioned that uh, when they sell these two vessels, they're going to sell it for about $208 million in sales. And their debt in 2021, if I recall, it is about $300 million in Oh, you clear off two-thirds. Uh. Yeah, yeah, you clear off two-thirds. And not only that, they're actually going to make money during... Um, because right now, the dry bulk, uh, business is pretty good. Yep. So their revenue and profit is going to be also pretty decent. Uh. In a way, I foresee that after selling these two ships and after getting some of the revenue and profits, they are going to be a net cash company in the next Great. two to three quarters. Yeah, so it's a good news for the company. And not only that, it's because they have been selling a lot of ships that their OPEX, which is the operating expenses, will yeah, also yeah, reduce yeah, drastically. Hence, I foresee that also their profit margins will also improve uh, mm. moving forward. Yeah, okay, that will be okay. something interesting uh, to see about the company. And last but not least is their cash flow. It's pretty healthy, going to be very healthy. However, the, you wouldn't be expecting their cash flow to grow a lot. Lah. And, it, and the cash flow is going to be healthy but smaller. So yeah, smaller. Because so now the business is, uh, they are essentially scaling down, right? Yeah, correct. It's just becoming more lean, a smaller unit, yeah. more efficient. That's really what they're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, guys, if you're enjoying the content so far, make sure you smash the like and subscribe button. Also, feel free to share this video to your friends or family who love to know more about Maybank. And make sure you smash the notification bell so that you will know when new videos are out. So Jonathan, so what do you like about the company or uh, what do you like less about the company? Okay, so here are some of the few uh, positive signs that I actually find about the dry industry, dry bar industry. Uh, number one is that there's actually lesser shipyard and dry buckets. Uh, actually I actually have YouTube research about this, uh, this point where there's this 
a guy called Mr. Khalid. He is a managing director for Precious Shipping. It is a public listed company in, I, if I recall, it's in the Thailand, in Thailand okay. uh, yeah, stock exchange. So in 2021, uh, sorry, let's go to 20, 10 years ago first, 2011. So in 2011, there's about 261 shipyards in China, Japan, and South Korea. And they deliver, they deliver about 1,569 dry bucks. So there's a lot of dry um, shippers over during that time. And 10 years later, there's the shipyard actually shrank to 89 shipyards. Whoa. And also the dry buckers also actually shrank about three times. So now there's only like 572 uh, dry buckers. So this actually speaks a lot about the industry that is getting more and more how to say, more and more uh, people are actually exiting from this industry because of regulation. One is regulation. Two is because of the, it's difficult to get financing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, banks are actually not willing to loan uh, people to buy ship, uh, dry bulk ships. Uh. Uh, yeah. And the second point is because uh, I see that there's a high demand for the dry bucket services. Uh, this is because, as you know, the US and China, they're actually having a lot of like, uh, sp stimulus of in course. terms of their infrastructures, right? So they're going to build and build a lot of infrastructures which needs a lot of iron ore. Uh, Electricity-wise, I think they're going to cut down on coal, but coal is still, they still pretty much of need course. coal. Yeah, so, and basically the data actually also shows that the coal, the prices of coal actually has, has actually been rising, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah, so that speaks a lot for uh, the dry bulk ship services where they still need to uh, transport this kind of dry uh, bug products. And the next two point is basically, uh, it's narrowed down towards Maybug, where I see that because they sell off a lot of their operating, exp uh, a lot of their ships, which in turn, they actually will reduce their operating expenses. Hence, I foresee that their margins will actually improve in the next two years. Uh, that's assuming that they don't buy any new ships. Uh. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, and last point is basically their cash flow is going to be gonna healthy. Improve, it's going to be improved and it's going to be healthy, but it's not going to be a large amount. Right. Yeah. So what, what, what about uh, some of the risks or things that maybe are not as good? Yeah, okay, sure. So in the risk of the company is that, of course, this industry is super slow. It's not really interesting like those kind of electric vehicle kind of industry. Yeah. So you don't you wouldn't expect like a suddenly a three x growth in revenue or five x growth in revenue in the next like five years or ten years yeah, and the next point is that the Maybank unfortunately they don't have any mode because uh essentially anybody uh they can actually go for opt for other shipping company if they want to since the rates are pretty much the same and That's anyone can with money can just set up a. Yeah. Essentially yeah. a shipping company, right? Correct. Yeah, that's true. And the third one is basically, I, I'm not sure whether this is a risk, but I'll put it like a 50-50 kind of thing. So it is the management decision moving forward. Mm. So right now we actually, uh, right now we know that the, the management plans to sell two of their ships, but moving forward, we don't know whether they will still continue to sell their ships to exit of the business or will they like, still maintain or buy even more ships. So it's, a, it's a question mark, right? Yeah, correct. It's of course, you know, you put that as 50-50. Imagine if they took the money and then they went into some higher tech, higher growth area. Then that might not be a risk, might be something yep. good, right? But of course, right now, there's, there are no hints. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know, uh, if you check, I, I think the management are a lot more senior. Yes, correct, correct. Right? Definitely. So the chances of getting into some new industry, I think it's going to be a lot lower. Yeah. But that's just my bias and my interpretation. Yeah, I agree with you. Most likely, it's it's not going to go to those kind of uh, lavish or exciting kind of industry. Uh. Okay. Uh, anything else? No. Uh, what do you think about the company so far? I pretty much agree with what you say. But uh, no, I've not studied in depth. Um. I think this sort of industry, if you're going to invest in this sort of stocks, right, uh, the best time to invest was 15 years ago. Yep. Or even before that, because of the China boom. Yes, right? definitely. That's why all these industries were doing well. And then 2008 happened, so people cannot have as much demand anymore, right? You need mm. stimulus and all that. So things slow down, right, including China. So the business gets affected, right? That's why you have like 1,500 yeah, uh, 1,500 ships. ships. Yeah. And then dropped by 500, basically. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
I think if I were to invest, not just in this company, just in this industry, industry in general, yeah, yeah. you have to do it when there are special events, right? Like, for example, you know, they're selling off ships yep. or something's happening. But to hold it a long term, I don't know. I will yeah. I'll probably pass. Right. So if uh, there's nothing else, guys, hope you all enjoyed this week's uh, Stock Dive. You know, remember to share with your friends if you found it useful. And, uh, you know, we are also on a lot of other social media platforms. We have a, you know, Telegram. We have Facebook, Instagram. And I think uh, Discord soon, right? Yes, sir. Soon will be open. So, yes, I look forward to that. And see you guys, uh, you know, next week.